Hello, we are talking with Peter Lisson uh, here at IT Camp 2017. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. Buona dimineața. <laughs> Buona dimineața. Uh, well, uh, yesterday uh, uh, during your presentation, uh, we learned about uh, quality, and you are said that quality is not part of your product and you introduce there a nice formula that uh, quality is product divided by a factor. Can you say us more about it? Um, so the, the formula I've been using for many years now is that quality is what you produce divided by what your clients expect. So that higher the expectations of your clients, of your users, the more quality problems you're going to have because they will always be disappointed. Um, and that makes it very difficult because every time you produce good quality, you bring up the expectations and so the next time it is worse. Yeah, man. makes sense, yes. So, yeah, yeah, I understand, yeah, that, that, that's great. And uh, also, you, you, I notice you are saying that uh, if you are not exceeding expectation, you are not delivering quality. That's an interesting uh, idea, especially that everyone wants to get to the plan, they, they, you know, to the product they want to deliver, not to do more than this. So how, how do you see this in the real world? The, the idea of delivering more than expected, of exceeding expect. If I buy a car, I want a car that is going to get me from A to B and I'm only going to really like the car if it is doing something more. And I'm thinking, oh my, look how many kilometers I'm getting out of a liter of petrol. Or isn't this comfortable? Or I like the stereo or something. There has to be something more than just what I expected in order for me to have an emotional response. Which is why I pushed the idea that quality is not something built into the car or into the product or service you're delivering. Quality is the relationship that someone has with your product. And if you, you have to focus on building this relationship um, which you cannot, it's very difficult to do because when you start building a product you have to think how can I create an emotion between someone I don't know and a product that doesn't exist and I have to build it in and design it as to from the start how am I going to surprise my users so that they are more than happy with this, that they can really fall in love with my product. And that's the level of quality we should be focusing on. It is, for me, it's very important today because you are working, we are all working in a global market. The, the software industry in particular, I can buy software anywhere in the world I'm not interested in buying software from someone in my town. I can buy it in India, I can buy it in Argentina. It's all the same price. I get it immediately at the speed of internet. And so you are competing today with a global market. If you're producing something physical, like, like a magazine, like like a paper magazine, I should say, um, or like uh, a motor car or some product, then the shipping routes are there. It takes a little bit longer. If you're producing software, I can buy and sell anywhere in the world at the speed of electricity. As fast as the internet can do it, I can send the information over. And so the the, the concept of quality. Because I can buy your products and services anywhere in the world, the quality that you are selling is the only thing that differentiates you. And you need to decide yourself what is quality for you. So for some companies, quality is being the cheapest in the world. 
For some companies, quality is to be the first on the market. For some companies, quality means zero defects. So it is your decision as to what your quality is, what is the thing that is going to separate you from the world, and to design into your products and services the level of emotion you want to create from your clients. Have I been talking too long? No, no. no that's, that's good. I mean, I think you you are very, very uh, clear and I really enjoy the idea that the differentiator of different products, especially for those online, right, it's it's a quality. And this brings us to uh, the book you mentioned during your presentation yesterday, uh, Zen or the Art to, of Repairing the Motorcycle, where you, you, can, you can learn how to connect better with the things and understand actually what's behind some, some certain mechanism. Uh, uh, how much uh, disconnect with your world of quality? I'm a very strong believer that everything is related. Okay, we live in a very small world. And it was during IT conference last year, I was busy reading Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance by Robert Persick. And I found it was a fantastic book on explaining quality and the relationship. And the idea that quality is, the expression he uses is peace of mind. You have to have the peace of mind. Last year, just after the conference, I gave the organizers here the title of my talk because I just love the <laughs> sentence. So a year ago I told them, I'm going to give a talk on, with the title, uh, Peace of Mind is Required for Assembly of Japanese Bicycle, oh, which is a turning point in the book. So for those who have not read it, it's a fairly bizarre story of a man who has had a serious emotional breakdown and who has completely changed his life all because of a simple question. So he was a university professor and one day a cleaning lady, if I remember correctly, walked into his office and said to him, but are you teaching them quality? And he started trying to understand what that meant. And it led to a s serious mental breakdown where he had a complete change of personality, lost his job, got into all kinds of problems. And in the book, he is reconnecting with his past slowly, meeting up people that he used to know. And he talks about himself from before and his son is traveling with him. And he starts explaining things and establishing the relationship. And it's a book that was written in 1970s, 1980s, something. I think it was in the 1970s. And it is a wonderful illustration as to what quality is. Obviously, he's not talking software, he's talking motorcycle maintenance but he has a relationship with his motorcycle, he has the peace of mind, he knows that if something is giving him satisfaction, then it is quality, and if he's not feeling comfortable with it, there is a problem. And that whole concept of peace of mind, for me, is the relationship you have to have with the work you're doing. If you feel comfortable with the work you're doing, you're probably doing a good job. Um, which brings me to the other subject I'm going to be talking about later today at the conference, which is that if people are going to be productive and creative at work, they have to be happy. And how do you make people happy at work? And that's another challenge. I agree. M might depend but on their personality. It depends on their personality, and there's certain things you cannot do, but there's a lot of things you can do. And I'm a very strong believer in trying
to give people the comfort they need at work so that they can achieve the peace of mind, so that they can achieve a level of satisfaction. But generally, I have been in the IT industry for over 40 years. Um, I have always seen that the teams that work best, that are producing the highest quality, are always teams that are happy together and are having fun at work. And that's something that most um, management magazines and articles ignore completely. They're looking at productivity and at motion and process and all these things. So, yeah, latest news yeah. is not... Yeah, yes. agree, agree. I think uh, for definitely I'll come to your talk <laughs> today, <laughs> you convince me. And now w one last question, because people usually, uh, when we are talking about testing, they are, as you say yesterday, they are putting on a table a lot of factors mm -hmm. about quality or all the measurements that uh, actually are doing. And for, for them, it's pretty important to, you know, do a lot of checks, we check, 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 check. But at the end, uh, the quality might not be there and they're not actually building a quality product, but they are doing an Excel maybe. Uh, can you comment a little bit on this? This will be the last question. <laughs> the quality factors, the quality attributes, the quality criteria are important. Okay? If, if I am using an interactive system and when I click on the button, it takes two or three minutes before I get an answer, I know it's bad. So that is definitely important. But for me, that is not part of the quality. That is part of the way it should run. If I, am, if I come back to a car, if I'm driving a car, it mustn't break down. But the fact that it does not break down does not mean it's a quality car. It just means that it's, <coughs> excuse me, it is achieving its objectives it's designed to do what it should be doing. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, <coughs> we can cut that bit out. Um, <laughs> the, for me, the... the, the no, I mean... I, uh, I'm going to quickly advertise my book sure, sure, while please. I'm on no, 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 that. Okay. Um, let me know if you want to ask me something else. One of, one of the things that I, I've been pushing, and this what I'm talking about in my book, which I've been trying another aspect of quality, is that I believe that the traditional organization of companies, which is based on what I call an old-fashioned structure of kings and barons, is not useful in the 21st century. And I want to see companies that are built according to the knowledge flow. So I don't, you may not fail because you did not have the information you needed to do your job. Okay, so we need to make sure that the knowledge is flowing through the company so that, I'm sorry, I'm not just selling my book but um, it's it's part of quality it's part of the quality message that I, I'm trying to push is you need the information at the right moment to come to you and today I think a big problem we have with quality in general is the high dependence we have on old-fashioned systems like email okay communication through email does not work anymore because I can check my email every day normally on an, on an average day I have got probably between 100 and 150 emails okay I'm going through them and I'm deleting I don't even read most of them I'm deleting most of them without reading because it's not something that I need today at this moment. And sometimes I delete something important because I'm just clicking through and m click on the wrong one by mistake. And so getting this knowledge flow, getting the understanding across, I need to know if I'm building a product, 
I need to have a good understanding of who is my client, what motivates them, what will make something work or not. If I want to create an emotion, I need to have that knowledge. And within the software world, if I am a business analyst, an architect, a designer, or a coder, or a tester, I need to have that information at the right moment. Ultimately, I would like to get rid of testing. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, I would like testing if you know you're there because testing is just demonstrating that the product works. Yes. For me, a tester may never find a defect that has to be found before it reaches testing. If the testers are finding defects, it means someone has not done their job. So, um, trying to remember who it was who said you cannot test quality into a product. If you're focused on quality, you should not need testing. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That's, that's my challenge to the software industry. Make testers redundant. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Make the testing function redundant. Use the testers to do something more useful and productive than just finding mistakes in other people's work. It's a terrible idea being a tester. I am being measured. Yes. My success as a tester yeah. is measured by how much rubbish I can find in your work. If I can it's, comment sorry. on this, no, if I can comment on this, uh, at some point I got an idea that you know developers are creating something good and testers are trying to find bad things. So yes. it's kind of yin and yang there. But yes. <laughs> and I don't want to find bad things. Okay, okay there's, there's, yeah. let's... You are positive. Let's, let's transfer the yang and just have a yin yin. <laughs> I don't know if that is correct, but I'm not sure what yin and yang mean. <laughs> I'm not even sure what language they're in. I think it's Korean, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. But that's another yeah. subject. Uh, okay, if you want to tell us a few things about uh, your book I, I see here. I'll give you a copy and you can review it in your magazine. Oh, that will be great. Okay, okay? Yeah. then I don't have to sell it to you. You can sell it in your okay. magazine. That's okay, better sure. for me. Okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there uh, is one shop in the world that has it in stock. Otherwise, okay. you have to buy it online. And the only shop in the world that has it on stock is here in Cluj. Oh, really? And it is the bookstory in the city center. Ah, okay. So if you go to Bookstory, they have it. Okay. And they're the only ones in the world who carry it in stock. <laughs> okay, thanks. And for our readers, the, the book is or Orchestrated Knowledge uh, by Peter Lisson, so you can find it in Cluj, in downtown, <laughs> at Bookstore. <laughs> or on Amazon oh. or anywhere online. Yes, okay. Okay, thanks, Peter. I think we got a great conversation. I'm looking forward to meet you next year here in Cluj. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>